say on Joey, I think, yeah, um, the, the reason he got away with it was, as you just pointed out, was because it's because it all worked out well for everybody. And, and, and yeah, that game at the end, all the City fans were singing QPR songs, vice versa. It was all one yeah. big loving. But I, I think, Joey, that struck me, we had him on our podcast a long time ago now. He was on for, you know, he came on for 50 minutes, stayed for 73. Um, and yeah. He talked very eloquently. He was, he was, he seemed quite a nice guy. He seemed, but I don't know. Yeah, but Newcastle. Yeah, he was that? talking about Newcastle a lot, but, um, <laughs> but he was the one that came out and said that they were bad eggs in the dressing room. Um, so, if it, so I'm just curious to know if you know who he was talking about, if it wasn't actually him. I think he was in that, I think when he said that, if I'm right, he was talking about Mauricio Isla, Eduardo Vargas and someone else. But the irony behind it is that, in my opinion, and in the opinion of quite a few others, those people, um, those were good people. They didn't mm. do well for the club, but they were good people. But one of those things which I kind of mentioned before is that when little groups start to be formed and so on, it's like if you're not part of the group, you're the enemy. And they have their opinions about what needs to be done to stay up. And if somebody's doing something on the contrary to that, then they get treated as if they have no value. But that wasn't the case. Like, say, if, if Eduardo Vargas would have scored goals for us, we would have stayed up. Like, that's it, plain and simple. But instead of trying to include them, you want to try and just vilify them. And it was an easy thing to do because for them, they're not part of this culture, not part of this country. So they don't even realise that they're being attacked as such. And even if they did, what did they say? Because Joey and Joey was like the centrepiece of the club at that time. And it's, and it's disappointing, but as I say, it's always, always tough. it was always tough with Joe because he obviously had Twitter and he had his platforms and he could go and speak and do whatever. And he can make, he can, he can make a good point, but you can always make a point against it, but very rarely do you get to because he makes the point on something like Twitter and you don't just go and have a Twitter response to him back. You don't have a back and forth. And I think at QPR as well at the time, he had a lot of, um, he had a lot, he had a lot of power. I think throughout most of his career, that I was there with him. He had a lot of power. So he'd say certain things, he could criticise whoever and there'd be no consequence. And when there's no consequence, you know, then he's the one who's leading the way. So he can call someone a bad egg and people want to believe it because, you know, he's, he's one of the centrepieces of the club. But those people, I'll, I'll tell you for a fact now, if I, if I saw them today, they'd be happy to see me. I'd, happy, I'd be happy to see them. And they were only at the club for maybe six months to a year. But those, mm. those, weren't, those weren't bad eggs at all. They just didn't really know what the club was and it just wasn't working out for them. I mean, so, there was room. Sorry, do it again. Sorry, uh -huh. there was there was rumours he actually was really instrumental in having Neil Warnock sacked, and I don't know how <laughs> true that is. All right, if you know that, but that's the rumours. I he, he wouldn't train for Neil and this that and the other. I mean, these are the rumours we as fans are hearing. Um, was that the case? Was not that the case? Or did you not see any of that? So what I'll say is that before um, that was going on, before I got there, but I've heard those rumours as well. And the rumours weren't coming from fans; they were coming from players. Okay. So I would say that certain elements of that, I can't, can't go on record and say this definitely happened specifically, but that was the tone because I think he, uh, I know a little story about that from when we were at City together and I think he tried to, I think he tried to get someone to lose the job over there as well, but he was met with Richard Dunn and someone else and they just told him to, uh, told him where to go, to be honest. He said, oh, let's get together and try and get whoever out and Dunny was like, nah, I'm all right, mate. So yeah, it's, it's definitely possible. So you won't be going on the coaching staff at Fleetwood then? <laughs> no, no, listen. This is this is the perfect situation for him because he had so many, quotation marks, great ideas about how the game should be played. So now as a coach, make it happen. This mm. is it. This is your test. This is your test. Like there, were, there was a time I think it was, I'm revealing so much here. You can tell I'm just an angry ex-pro now. But we were... Um, it's great. Yeah, we were... Uh, I think we were in Ireland for pre-season in 2014, 15, I think it was. When we signed like Real Ferdinand and people like that. And Real was brought in to play a three at the back, I think. And we were trying to play it in a particular way. And I think um, Harry Redknapp wanted to play with... I think it might have been two holders or something in the midfield as well. And this, this is what blew my mind. Joey was adamant, 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 adamant that Harry was getting it wrong. So we'd be, as players, like, you have a voice, but you don't really have a voice. Because if the coach says, jump on your left foot for 10 minutes, you jump on your foot for, left foot for 10 minutes because that's what you're hired to do, to listen to your coach and be told what to do. Like, there are no rogues or whatever. 
but he was against it. And it went for like a few days where it was ultimately sabotaging it. Every time we tried to do this formation, he wouldn't, he wouldn't do it properly because he kind of wanted it to fail. And it got to a point where we all gathered together and Joey just told, told Harry Redknapp in front of everyone, this isn't going to work. I'm not going to do it. And then before you know it, first game of the season comes and we played a different formation. So just let that one sink in. Incredible. I don't, by the way, I, loads of what you've said is kind of really um, revealing. The one thing that's not revealing is that Joey Barton, I know you didn't say who it was, that Joey Barton didn't think much of fans because I think he was pretty, always <laughs> pretty well quoted as uh, saying he didn't think much of the opinions of fans. Um, yeah, that, he has his opinions. He has his opinions and that's, that's fair enough. You know, he's, he's a different type of person. Like lots of people love him. Lots of people don't like him at all. I fall into the second camp, but it's no bother because, you know, overall we had some good years together playing and that was, we were just doing our jobs.